as promised on my Instagram, I'd show you how to make this absolutely gorgeous pom-pom border. It's also known as a bobble edging and I think it finishes off a project beautifully. I've worked this border onto the Lemon Peel Stitch Baby Blanket. I do have that linked in the description box below, so do please go have a look at that. There's lots of ways to make this border, but this is just the way that I do mine. I do like my pom-poms to look round and plump. I will show you how to get yours looking nice and round like mine later on in this tutorial. I think you do have to agree they do look absolutely beautiful on the end of a baby blanket. Okay so let's get started. So I've got my DK weight yarn and the 4mm hook. To make our chain 9 spaces, we're going to join our yarn into that first stitch. So insert your hook, bring your yarn towards the back to feed it through the first stitch. Leaving a long tail as we will be weaving that in at the end. So I chain one and that does not count as a stitch and then I do a further nine to make my first chain nine space. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. So we're going to skip three stitches and we are working a slip stitch into the fourth stitch and that creates our first chain nine space. This is how mine look and mine have an approximate two centimetre drop. It depends on how many chains you've chosen to work. You can work five chains, seven chains, it's really up to you. I went ahead and worked the other side of the blanket so I could show you how everything just matches up because we are just repeating the row on the opposite side of the blanket. We're simply repeating the chain nine, skipping three stitches and working a, a slip stitch into the fourth stitch all the way to the end. Okay, moving on to the next chain nine space. and skipping three stitches and we're working into the fourth stitch with a slip stitch. Repeat this all the way to the end. I'm going to miss these three stitches and a slip stitch into the fourth stitch. Right, so this is how mine look. Yours should look similar. Work the rest of your stitches all the way to the end. If you haven't got enough stitches at the end, I will show you what to do with those. I'll meet you back there. Okay. 
Okay, so as we come to the end, you might find you haven't got enough stitches. So all I do here is I count my remaining stitches and I'll just divide how many spaces I can fit into there. So you might have a space where you have skipped four stitches and not three. Just got to work it out so that it's not too noticeable. And then you work your last slip stitch into the last stitch there. So keep a long tail there also because we will be weaving those in at the end. I'm just going to work my last chain nine space. And on this space, I haven't been able to skip three stitches, so I'll just slip stitch into that final stitch. It's not too noticeable if you have a look. Okay, so that's the last slip stitch and we have completed this side of the blanket and there can you see it's not too noticeable when you have a look at it and being the end of the blanket no one will see it so just leave a long tail and we're going to work those in so there we've got some nice even spaces to work our pom-poms into so i'm just gonna get a darning needle to sew in my ends make sure you make a secure knot so they they don't come undone the way i do my knot is i feed my needle through where we slip that first stitch now don't draw your yarn all the way through you want to feed the yarn back through that loop and then you want to pull tight and that will secure your first knot I'm going to make another knot exactly the same way and that way I know that this yarn will not unravel any chains that we have worked. Again, you go through that loop, feeding your yarn through and then tightening so that it becomes a knot. So we've got two knots there now. So make sure you pull it tight. There, can you see it's fairly secure now so we can now snip that tail off okay so that's one tail waved in and we just go over to the other corner and do the same on this corner now these darning needles you can buy easily online this particular darning needle is from a set of three I got three different sizes um, you can use any needle really something that's going to be easy for you to work with so I'm just knotting this side up so you want it nice and tight and you want a nice clean finish so you don't want it to look too bulky in that corner so you just want to work as neatly as possible going back into that loop and making a knot if your yarn gets twisted just give it a little poke with your needle and then tighten it up again
Okay, so that's the second knot. So now I'll just snip that tail off and we've got a nice clean finish on each corner of the blanket. Okay, so now on to the exciting part where we work our different coloured pom-poms into each chain nine space. So again, I'm using the four millimetre hook. Taking your chosen colour of yarn, we're making a loop into our finger and thumb like that. Take it towards the back of the first chain nine space towards the middle and you want to draw up the yarn through the chain nine space. So we're chaining one using both strands that secures your new yarn into place like so. So that doesn't count as a chain. So from here we're chaining three using both strands of our yarn because we're working in that tail to start off with. Working a cluster stitch here so you want to Yarn over, insert your hook into that first loop that we made to join our yarn. I'll just show you exactly where I've inserted my hook. Take it out there. Can you see that very first loop that we made to join our yarn? I'm inserting the hook into there. So you want to yarn over and pull through the first two loops. At this point you are okay to let go of your tail and just work your working yarn. So again you want to yarn over, go back into that same loop, yarn over, pull through two. That will leave you with three loops on your hook and again yarn over Set your hook, yarn over, pull through two, and you will have four loops on the hook. So you yarn over, pull through all four loops. That is your first cluster. So you chain three, Okay, so we've already chained one, this is the second and the third. Now here we're making another cluster stitch. So yarn over and insert your hook into that very first chain. So if you just tilt it towards you, you will be able to see that very first chain. So we're working another cluster here. So you just carry on until you've got four loops on your hook. Okay, so we've got four loops. Yarn over, pull through all four. Now that's another cluster that we've worked. So you want to bring that forward over the top and slip stitch into that first cluster that we made. Here I like to finish off with another slip stitch into the chain 9 space. Okay, so leave a long tail because I'll show you how to get your palms nice and round. I mean, you can leave them like this if you want to. You can just simply weave your ends in at this point. I will show you why. 
Okay, so just pull your tail through. And we're snipping off the first tail that we worked in at the beginning. Okay, so this, you can leave it as it is, just working in your tail and snipping it off. But I'll show you how I get mine to look nice and plump at the end. Okay, so I just want you to work the rest of your chain nine spaces exactly the same way we did. So it's a cluster stitch that we're using to make our bobbles, pom-poms. So taking another coloured yarn, we're going to work on our second pom. So again, you want to leave a long tail, make a loop between your thumb and your finger and bring it towards the back of your chain nine space. Okay, so just bring your yarn through chain one. That doesn't count as a stitch. Using both strands, we are chaining three. Remember, we are working in our tail here. Work a cluster stitch into that very first chain we made to join our yarn. So it's insert your hook, yarn over, pull through your first two loops. And here you can let go of your tail yarn and then just work your working yarn. So you want to carry on until you have four loops on your hook. That's one, two, three. So just one more. Go through first two loops and then you go through all four loops on your hook. And then you want to chain three to make your second cluster. So we're working into that very first chain of your chain three. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull through two, and you want four loops on your hook before you draw through all four loops. And that makes a cluster. So you bring that forward over the top of the previous cluster and you're working a slip stitch into that first stitch and then again into your chain nine and then you want to leave a long tail before you snip it off. So again, you want to snip off your first tail and we'll leave the long tail for when we've worked all our palms. So there you go, that's how they look. I mean, like I said, they're perfectly fine as they are and you can weave in your ends and just leave them like that. So I'll just let you work the rest and I'll meet you back at the end. Okay, so let's have a look at how I weave in my loose ends. So if you have a look at each pom, you'll have a gap on either side because we did bring that first, well, the second cluster over the first. So you'll have two gaps on either side, as you can see. So it's not necessary for you to sew them up, but I just like to do that. And I feel like they are much rounder, much more squishier when you've sewn in those gaps. I start off with making a knot as I showed you 
earlier on just like that and then with the rest of your till I saw in the gaps so I've just feed my darning needle in through the fibers of the yarn and as you do this you will notice that your pom-pom will start to look much rounder and almost look filled if you know what I mean just go in and out with that tail just carry on doing this until you're happy with the shape of your pom so you want to make all your pom poms the equal size as you're sewing in your end so just snip off that tail and moving on to the next so again you're just repeating the process and you want to do this for the rest of your poms I know weaving in ends isn't really the the best job but honestly it's so rewarding at the end when you see how the finish looks on this blanket or whatever it is you're working on you will thank yourself again we're sewing in the gaps on either side I take the edge stitches and I use those to work in my tail So it's these edge ones that you want to go through. I feed the darning needle through the middle of the pom-pom to get to the opposite side and weave in to sew the other gap we have. So use the edge stitches going back and forth before I snip off my tail I like to go in through the middle a few more times and that gives it that stuffed look on the pom-pom I'll show you what I mean so if we take one that hasn't been sewn like that one's looking quite flat and the one I've just sewn has that look of it being filled so it looks much rounder and they just look really nice and squishy really so as I said this is an optional method but if you didn't want to sew in those gaps all you do is weave in your ends uh, make a few knots and then snip off your tail If you'd like to make them look nice and round like mine go ahead um, But I guess I think I'm a little bit more fussy With, <laughs> with how mine look so I'll just snip off the tails as I go along just look at them though they're so cute I'm just going to carry on making the rest of my pom-poms and then I'll work in all my tails in at the end I hope you've enjoyed watching my tutorial and found it helpful if you'd like to make this lemon peel stitch blanket, I've linked that in the description box below, along with timestamps.
any questions please do leave them in the comments section below and i'll see you next time thanks for watching